everybody. I'm down here on my decorating table and uh, I am scratching my head. <laughs> do you ever do that? <laughs> do you ever do that when you come to decorating, scratch your head? I do sometimes. I have to admit, yes, of course. Of course we do. We're all human, aren't we? We're not always overflowing with brimming over with inspiration, are we? Sort of if inspiration is a, a fluctuating bird that comes and goes. Anyway, um, I've got here a couple of things to that I did do. I don't know if I was I don't know if I was really inspired or not. I think I was, but anyway. Um, as you can see here, this is a small covered caddy, which has been glazed. I waxed it, you see. In fact, you saw me wax these. I've cleaned them well off, all right? So there's no residue of glaze there anywhere. And these, I, I then glazed and I banded. And I've also, you probably can't see it, but I've actually put some, some wax on here as well. So, let us just make sure we can see okay the light is coming in rather isn't it right through that door maybe i'm going to close the garage door because it's making the contrast don't know if that's going to help okay so maybe maybe we can come a bit closer Actually, maybe I should put the camera on the other side because then it's not so much looking into the sun. Maybe like that. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, the reflected light is uh, causing my cheapo camera some contrasting problems. Anyway, um, we're going to be too close, do we? All right, there. So, yeah, what I did with this one is I took some wax and I did a little design on here, on top of the glaze. And what I want to do now is um, take some take some blue wash or which is a mixture of cobalt and red iron oxide um, manganese di and manganese dioxide basically those ingredients and I'm here you can see I'm sort of I'm getting together here a a wash which is just a watery watered down pigment you see so okay so I've got some wash ready I'm going to center up my my piece on on the banding wheel here I'm going to load the brush and I'm going to apply the wash over the glaze on top of the wax, okay, you see what happens. May need to load, maybe need to just go over this once or twice. Okay, there's that, and also here on the top. Sure, this brush is a bit wide. Maybe we should have a not such a wide brush. Another one. So, taking another brush which is not so wide, I'm now going to do the the top here. Dee, 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 dee. 
So remember, when you apply a pigment or a wash, it'll go around once, but then as it goes around another time, it takes on another layer, you see? So it gets, it gets thicker. That's something to bear in mind when you are doing pigment type decorations. All right, so there's that guy. He's actually ready now to go into the kiln, but before before we leave, I've got another another pot to do. That's a that's a teapot. So. There is the teapot. Not happy with the picture at the minute, with the this light that's coming in. So we'll put him there. All right. Let's get on with that one. Okay, so this is basically the same. Okay, it's a teapot that I've waxed, waxed the lid. Incidentally, when you do a teapot, don't forget to clean out the, um, the holes in the, in the strainer inside the spout there. You may want to get a piece of wire like this, you see, and bend it. And then you can, you can push, it, push through the... Um, the holes and clean out any glaze otherwise you'll, you'll end up with a blocked strainer. Oof. A blocked strainer you do not want. Okay so here I've got a decoration I've got it now. I shouldn't really be doing this on camera because it may well go wrong. Ha! Huh. There you go. Because I've got to strike this with a brush pretty much one time and it's got to be right. If you follow me. So, anyway, I've got here, I've got a, 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 here a wax decoration. So what I want to do is just hit this with the brush one time and pass it over. And it won't really be able to go back over that, I don't think. So I've got to, I've got to be bold. And just do it. There he is. He dribbled a bit there, didn't he? No worries. I can scrape that away. Sometimes, you see, if you do some, uh, some decorating and you make a mistake, all right, all is not necessarily lost. I don't like to have to go back over things, but occasionally it's necessary to. So get your pen knife out or a sharp knife and just very carefully scrape the um, scrape the surface of the pigment away from the glaze without scraping the glaze away okay again let's load the brush get the thickness right you don't want it too thick you see neither do you want it too watery you've got to just get it right that comes with experience a bit that kind of thing that knowledge okay so the decoration is there. You can't see it until I hit it with the with the brush. Let's see if we can make it work. Okay. That little dribble, that little dribble that occurred there, I will carefully scrape away. Okay. But we do actually have another one on the lid here so we're going to have to do that let's maybe I don't know if we can bring in the, the camera for a bit of, of close-up even all right so now with all this kind of work that we're doing you do have to be a little bit bold if you're too frightened to touch the pot with your brush and all this, you know, well, you're just going to be, you're going to be hesitant and you're going to be, you know, you're not going to be sure of yourself. And the only way to become, to be sure of yourself is, is to do it. 
and you'll know then the touch that you need, the feel that you need to be able to get the result that you want. You need to know what your limitations are a little bit and unless you push your boundaries a bit you'll never know. One of the things I do when I buy a car, very often a, a new car that I'm not familiar with, uh, I'll get, go on an open stretch of road where there's nobody around and I'll just go at, at 50 miles an hour or something like that and slam on the brakes just to see how the car will hold, hold to the road. What am I going to expect in an emergency situation? So I create an emergency situation for myself artificially when I know that there's nobody around who's going to you know, get in the way everywhere and just apply the brakes and do an emergency stop. Well, you need to also, in a sense, do learn to do some um, emergency decorating and push your boundaries a bit and then you'll know. Okay, so here you can see the lid. I've got the brush loaded up. I just want to strike this once and just go right across and okay. So, there it is. Okay. So, now that will come out a nice blue. Um, actually, I'll show you here. I've got some nice, nice little ones that came out of the kiln. I don't know if you can see, see that. See that blue in there? It's a kind of nice blue, isn't it? It's not too, not too strong, not too powerful. It's slightly, it's been, it's been toned down, you see. And, um, and you really want to do that with your with your cobalt. You want to turn it down, Tush. Otherwise, it's they're quite nice, aren't they? I, I, I was pleased with the. I like the contrast of the blue on the white, and and then with the unglazed toasty exterior. I th I thought it made a nice a nice combination. So, well, there's just a, um, a few snippets on, on decorating. And, um, yeah, I may just titivate this a little bit and, and change it. Not change it, but just um, improve it. Okay. Right. Time for our goodbyes. <laughs> thanks for watching, folks. Seriously, thanks for watching, and uh, have a go. Have a go with some pig pigments, um, iron oxide, cobalt. M mix them up, you see, and um, get yourself some brushes. They haven't got to be expensive brushes. These washes I do with these brushes, they're not expensive. They're um, these are cheap, cheap brushes. But for doing washes, they're they're actually quite good and because um, they've got quite a lot of nice springiness to them and then um, other other brushes for doing other kinds of decoration what was that maybe it was the fire uh, these kind of brushes Japanese brushes um, I use those small and small far, fine and medium and large really Okay, please visit my website, simonleachpottery.com, and of course, as always, keep practicing. <laughs> Hang on in there. Don't give up. I tell you, just keep at it. Bye-bye.